Hi, my name is Austin Sheldrick. I'm here with Monarch Broadcasting, and we're going to be taking a look at what's been going on in PLHS this week. You know, for some people, track becomes second nature. For me, it's not all that great. Why don't we take it over to Coach Pilikowski and some of his star athletes and find out more about this year's track team. I run the 200, the 400, and the 4x1. Well, I got a really big team, so I think we need some really big rings, won that state championship. Winning's everything. That's all that matters. Just Probably. kidding. <laughs> well, track, you don't really get hurt, even though I did break my foot at the 4x4. 2014, it's whatever though. But it's just a fun sport. It's the only sport where you get to see where you actually progress through the week and like see yourself actually getting better by week by week as opposed to the whole season. Long and triple jump. In long jump it's to go 23 or longer and triple jump it's 45 or longer. Um, lots of warming up and just jamming out to music. Um, it's probably because it's like an individual sport but it's still kind of a team sport so you have that team setting but you're just more worried about yourself you know. Uh, I just participate in pole vaulting. Uh, my goal is to get a, get a state title. Probably help the team get points at state so then we can get a, get a fat ring on our hands. Uh, it's light stretching, you know, and then uh, probably eat some Skittles or something. Get, my, get myself going. Uh, the, one of the football coaches who doesn't teach here anymore, but he kind of just said I look like a pole vaulter, so to try it out and then it worked out for me. Uh, we really want to try and be competitive across the state. We've been really lucky the last few years to be among the top two or three teams in the state. Uh, so it would be a goal to be among the best teams in the metro and then be in the top five in the state in terms of uh, at the state meet in May. Uh, I coach all the sprinters and then I coach the long and triple jumpers. I got into coaching the long and triple jump because I, in high school and college I didn't want to be a sprinter or do a long distance so a jump swim was kind of what was left so I gravitated towards the jumps and had some success at it and I, I've really enjoyed it ever since. Uh, we expect every day for the kids to come and uh, give their very best, try hard, uh, compete, have some fun and uh, at, the, at the end of the season feel like they're a, a better person for and a better athlete. As you can see here, Papillion La Vista High School's core values were based on making sure all students are widely spread throughout different activities. This week in our Hobby Spotlight, we take it to Travis Schwartz to see how our students are going through a more unorthodox hobby. Airsoft is a hobby that started around 2005. Depending on the size of the game and the playing field, two teams face off to defend or capture objectives or just eliminate other players. Airsoft guns are replica firearms that launch a polymer pellet through a compressed air system. When a player is hit, they must call themselves out via the honor system or a designated admin. We went behind the scenes with a few monarchs that play airsoft to find out why they do it. Well, airsoft, it's a great team building activity where uh, two groups, they uh, compete against each other to knock out enemy players or capture the flag. Um, it's pretty fun. It doesn't hurt as bad as paintball, but it's pretty fun. Well, I got into it because uh, my buddy Travis Schwartz, uh, he played airsoft and he wanted me to come out with him and so I bought one of his guns off of him and I went out with him one time and just loved it. Uh, well, my favorite thing to do is, uh, I like the combat in it, I mean, like, it makes me feel like I'm in a wartime situation. With me being the National Guard, it kind of puts me in that mindset of I'm ready to go and helping me train further on in life. As humans, we all know that every one of us is different in our own special way. This week in our teacher feature, we take a special look at two teachers who decided to come from a long way to teach right here at PLHS. So my name is Mackenzie Morgan. I was born in Littleton, Colorado, um, and that's where I grew up. Um, I moved out here about four years ago with my husband. He got into dental school at Creighton University. That's what brought us out here. 
Um, well, definitely landscape is for, you know, different for one. Uh, I miss the mountains quite a bit. Uh, but as far as people, they're really friendly. Um, I think in both places. Um, so that's not much different. I think I'm James Hanmer. I teach Honors World Literature English and English 10. I've taught creative writing, sophomore English, um, and other senior classes. Um, I grew up in California, San Francisco Bay Area, uh, just south of San Francisco, right around Stanford University. I went to college at UC Santa Barbara so I could walk the beach to school and walk the beach back home and ended up teaching for about um, 17 or 18 years there. Uh, they are different. You know, there are real cultural differences in different parts of the United States. Uh, the Bay Area is very free-flowing, very um, lively. At the same time, it can be a very closed-minded place. Um, I think there's a misunderstanding that uh, the coasts are real open-minded and Midwest or South are closed-minded. That's not my experience. My experience is a lot of people here are more open-minded than a lot of the people I knew in the Bay Area. Uh, California teaching is, um, in a way, very free. By that I mean, uh, at my high school, you know, you could come and you could teach in flip-flops and a Hawaiian shirt, and as long as you got your job done and did a good job, uh, you were fine. Uh, here in Nebraska, it's a little more conservative when it comes to the way, uh, the way you must dress, the way you teach, the way you need to act. Uh, which is not a bad thing, it really is not. I mean, there are positives and negatives to both. At times, though, I do miss the freedom to teach what I want, when I want, how I want, and in some ways, you know, uh, but this is nationwide. The changes have allowed teachers less freedom nationwide. That's not just a Nebraska thing, so. Oh. Man, I don't know if you guys are as ready for March Madness as I am, but why don't we take it over to Paige Hager and Zach Bailey for the full story. Hello, Monarch Nation. It's that time of year again for college basketball fans to fill out their brackets. Every year, the NCAA hosts the Collegiate Basketball National Tournament, featuring 64 teams, which includes 32 division winners and 32 top-ranked teams, selected by a committee of athletic directors across the country, according to NCAA.com. Every year, hundreds of thousands of fans complete brackets of their predicted winners. Even the president got in on the act. Now we take it to Dylan Ashby and Coach Travis Linder for some inside information on March Madness. Uh, usually I watch college basketball throughout the year, so I kind of go based off records and what I've seen in the past. Um, but for me, I always pick Kansas because I'm a Kansas fan, so usually I'm always in my top four. Uh, as soon as Selection Sunday is complete and all the teams are picked, I'm um, fill out within a day and then Sometimes I fell out more, so it might take me a couple days, but pretty quick. Jayhawks, Kansas all the way. They're a powerhouse. I've liked them since I was a young kid, so it's kind of my favorite team. Uh, I think that's, it's not so much for luck, but I always like to get uh, friends together. Um, we wear jerseys, and then it's always wings. Any sporting event, but especially March Madness, the Super Bowl, those things, always wings. It's a must. Hey, you got to take a lot of research into it. You look online, you look at statistics, you got to look at matchups, who's a three-point shooting team, how does that team defend the three-point line, look at uh, how their neutral site uh, records were during the year, were they good on the road, were they good at home, were they good at neutral sites, you factor a lot of stuff in. At the end of the day, it goes back to coaching. If you have a great coach and it's a tight game, you take the coaching over the guy who's not as better coach. Uh, I actually fill out several brackets. You got to do the initial gut feeling right away when it first comes out, fill out immediately, wait a day, see if there's any new injury reports coming out, any suspensions, academically ineligibles, fill out a second bracket, and then the day before it starts, the night before it starts, you go in, look at the two brackets, see if they make sense to match up, you go with it, if you have conflictions, then you go back and you look back and forth and which one's the better pick, and that's the final bracket. Send in at the last minute, that way if there's anything that comes up, ineligibilities, anything like that, injuries, you know it. Uh, well, during the games, you're sitting a certain way and they go on a run, you don't move at all. You just sit there. Even if your foot goes to sleep, something you can't move at all. Uh, before games, you usually have a lucky shirt I'll wear. If they're winning, you wear the same shirt every time. I wear the same hat. If they lose, then you got to switch it up. But if they win, you consistently you got to wear the same thing, do the same thing every time. Well, 
That's about all the time we have here for Monarch Nation News. My name is Austin Sheldrick. Don't forget to check us out on Twitter, YouTube, and Vine so you can stay up to date on everything happening here in Monarch Nation. And as always, stay classy, Monarchs.